What's up, y'all? And welcome back to Real Talk Atlanta, where we're bringing you real life, real scenarios, and of course, all things real estate. We are your hosts, Taisha Renee. Ashley Luray, River the Realtor, and Nika W. And thank you so much for tuning in. Today's episode is so essential for all of our home buyers that are looking to purchase a home. Today, we are talking about the first step you need to take. Sometimes before you even talk to a realtor, I mean, you can talk to a realtor, then do this, but um, this is the first step you need to take in order to purchase a home, and that is getting a pre approval. Yes. 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 Real talk. Very important. Right on time, as Taisha <laughs> would say, right on time. When getting a pre approval, I know sometimes a lot of on Instagram, a lot of reels a lot of means realtors are like oh if you don't have a pre-approval then i don't know you right. we're not going to see no houses <laughs> but no seriously like a pre-approval is so essential but how do you guys describe a pre-approval to someone who hasn't heard of it or isn't familiar with it yeah i definitely like i say a pre-approval i always describe as the golden ticket right you guys have seen willie wonka in the chocolate factory if you don't have that <laughs> golden perfect. ticket yeah. you are not going with them okay <laughs> you need to stay outside and that's kind of how the pre-approval is right it's that piece of paper from the lender that says hey this buyer is approved for x amount of dollars and based on that we as realtors can start your home shopping process because without it we're kind of like the blind leading the blind we don't know your mm-hmm. price right. point we don't really know what we're doing we until we anything. have a firm number yeah. mm-hmm. exactly mm-hmm. from the lender saying this is how much you can shop for this is your limit and we can kind of take it from there but definitely need that golden ticket if you want to get your house for sure for oh, sure seriously. yeah and I think it gets everyone excited like that's the very first step yeah. to kind of get you ready to start searching for your home Right, people are like, oh, I'm pre-approved. I can really buy a house. Right, you can <laughs> really out. buy a yeah. house. Like, <laughs> find that number. But also, I feel like in, in the market that we're in, and sellers expect buyers to have their pre-approval oh, yeah. prior to that. Exactly. Time is of the instance. Like, once you start shopping for homes and you want to put an offer on a home, mm-hmm. the first thing they're going to ask you is to attach that pre-approval. Letter Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, because we need proof of funds. We I need, need, we need, need to know that you can secure the deal because we got a lot of people that are interested. And if yes. you don't have your approval funds, then it's on to the next. Right. Literally. It's on to the next. So before we jump into details about what we need today, we decided to ask our parents, Yes. Um, what were the requirements when they needed to purchase a house like what did they need to see if there's some type of difference uh, I guess I can start with my mom my mom and my father purchased their house in 2002 and while she could not remember what exactly <laughs> she needed I just want to shout them out because they just recently paid off their house yes. oh, so yes. they are mortgage yes. free Building so equity. let's okay, okay shout out to black home ownership and I'm just so proud of them cheers to that yeah cheers to that <laughs> Man, I'm gonna take a sip for my parents yeah let's do that let's do that <laughs> That's awesome. So what would your parents say, Ashley? So my mom, she didn't remember either. She purchased <laughs> her home back in 2006. She relocated from New York, bought a house here. She went the new construction route. So mm, awesome. it was a little different than how it is now. There there were no bidding wars or wait lists to get in. or you, She didn't have to um, reserve her lot or pay a, what is it called? A premium. Yeah, the there were no premiums. lot of premiums. Yeah. yeah, so she just paid. I think she said like five thousand dollars to reserve her lot, and that was it. So definitely, oh, nice. yeah. definitely different from what's going on here. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. My mom's first time home buying experience. Excuse me, was a little bit different because I'm from. Shout out to Chicago. <laughs> uh, I'm from up north, and so one thing that we have a lot of that you don't really see here in Atlanta, especially right now, is like multi unit homes. Mm-hmm. So my mom's very first home purchase was actually a multi unit. It was a three flat on the south side of Chicago, mm-hmm. where her and my dad lived in one unit because she was pregnant with my sister at the time and then her grandmother lived upstairs and then my grandmother her mom lived downstairs so it was three unit dwelling and in her head she's like I need to find something that can accommodate my entire family but in terms of her home buying process she said the biggest thing that she thinks was different then and now was just like the price point and the competitiveness right Mm -hmm. so she bought this home back in the early 90s, 92, my sisters were 93. And she was saying, like, you know, it was more so you go and you see a house and you want it. Yeah. If you're pre-approved and you have the money, <laughs> like, the house is pretty much yours, right? There was no competitive competitive nature in the market then like it is now. So she was just saying that the process was a lot easier mm-hmm. um, then to her just because of, you know, the restrictions. And like I said, the competitiveness was different. Right. You know, you see it, you like it, it belongs to you. You really didn't have to have that, like, crafty realtor like us to <laughs> really secure the deal back then. So that was the biggest thing. She really kind of was able to navigate the process different. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that that's really what she talked about, like, the need for a realtor now versus then. She was like, mm-hmm. she was able to navigate better herself because mm-hmm. the market was as wasn't as strategic as it is now. One thing that's different too 
is the inventory. Back then, mm-hmm. it was more of a buyer's market. So there were a ton of houses available if you wanted one. It was pretty easy to find. Now, mm. Ooh. <laughs> call on your realtor. Yeah. <laughs> Did you guys see the stats for last month? Supply? 0.9. Oh, yes. That's Demand, yeah. 5,000. No <laughs> yes. But for my parents, it's a little bit different because they're from Haiti. So Haitian real estate is a little bit, it's a whole lot different. Mm-hmm. So yeah. and in Haiti, you don't really have financing. You have to find a piece of land and you build it yourself. You find your own builder, your own developer and things like that. So I have a lot of Haitian clients that come to me and they don't really see the importance of a pre-approval letter. So that will like just the mindset. I have to kind of like train them and kind of mm-hmm. explain the process yeah. a little bit deeper because they're used to just getting a lot and build it themselves and don't have mm-hmm. to worry about a mortgage ever. Yeah, so, absolutely. That's interesting. Yeah, very. That's yeah. very interesting. Yeah, so it's it's a little bit different. It's, it's definitely a lot different. Mm. I like that, though. I'm going to build my house right, right, okay. right now, right? <laughs> but again, think about it. If you don't have that money to actually purchase a land and build all of that, yeah, you have to be cash homeless. Heavy. Right. Mm-hmm. Literally, and you need that pre-approval from the mortgage company (laughs) right in order to start your home buying journey so Mm -hmm. so let's jump right into what do our buyers need today somebody who's looking at this what's the first thing we're going to do let's start off with employment because first of all you need a job right yeah (laughs) (laughs) or you need to be like julia's baby and have two jobs okay you need a job job. you need to have some (laughs) income coming in tell us about that nika okay of course so employment is very very important so when the lender is when you're applying for a mortgage and the lender is going to give you a pre-approval, they want to make sure that they lend to someone that has stable income Mm -hmm. and a stable employment history. Because as we're thinking about buying a home as an investment, the lender, you're their investment, so they're investing in you. So they got to make sure that not only you're going to purchase this house, but you're going to be able to pay it off. So employment history is very important. In a lender's eye, buyer generally needs to produce consistent and reliable income for two years. And it's okay if you change job in between. However, the gaps need to be minimal and you need to be able to kind of like explain that. So, for example, if you have, if you say you make a million dollar a year, right? Can you prove it is the question. Mm-hmm. Can the you, proof. do you actually have the documents to back it up? So, usually when you go into the pre approval process, employment verification, the lender is going to ask you for your last two year recent tax return. Mm-hmm. Um, he's going to ask you for your W 2s, last recent two years W 2s, and also he's going to ask for your 30 day pay stubs. Now, it gets tricky. When you're going through the pre-approval process, they're going to ask you for the 30-day pay stubs. However, along the process, they're going to keep asking you for updated pay stubs to show you your year-to-date income. And to be honest, I have a great story for this type of it's a real life scenario, and like I said, bring we'll us talk- the real. We okay, real talk. I'm, I'm going to bring the real <laughs> because this happens a lot. And I had a client. We're going to name him Robbie. Hey, Robbie. Hi, Robbie. (laughs) (laughs) So Robbie came to me about purchasing a home, and initially he said that he already had a pre-approval letter. Okay, so usually when you're going to the when you go into the pre-approval process as well, uh, you're able you actually recommend I always recommend all my clients to go ahead and shop around for different lenders, Mm -hmm. just like you shop around for different realtors. Right. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that that connection is right. He did have a pre-approval letter from a lender. However, I did recommend to go ahead and try my preferred lender. And you guys, we can talk about later on, like, why is it best to work with your realtor's partners Mm -hmm. and why is it really good to really partner with them? However, through the approval process, she got her approval letter. I mean, he, Robbie, and um, (laughs) (laughs) Robbie had the approval letter and he was ready to go. So we started looking, you know, shopping for homes. And now think about it. We're on our 15th show. Okay. So, because the market, the market is hot, mm-hmm. okay? So now, we're finally, I actually had Robbie, two of his offers actually had a, got accepted. And then now, we're about to go under contract on one of his favorite homes. So now, uh, the lender, once we go under contract, the lender is going to start verifying those documents again. And, oh my God, y'all won't believe <laughs> <laughs> Y'all would not believe we go on the contract. The lender is asking for updated documents and he's going to CC the realtor because we need to be in the loop for everything. And 
I remember the lender kept asking, hey, your pay stub is not really matching the job that you had in your tax return. Can you please keep giving me an updated pay stub? And um, Robbie kept saying, hey, um, I submitted the document they wanted. I don't know why he keep asking for updated ones. So as a realtor, right, I'm going to make sure... Again, we're going under contract, and this time is of the essence with real estate. So I'm saying, hey, Robbie, send me the documents. Let me review it. Maybe you're getting it confused because some people don't know the difference between a W-2 and a tax return. So therefore, send me your documents. I'll preview it, and then I will contact the lender and send it forward to the lender. Long story short, Robbie submitted the document to me via email. I'm reviewing the document, and it's looking a little off. It's you know because mm. now we had we're in a um, world where technology is everything. So your pay stub, lenders kind of know what that looks like, mm, right? So you come in the pay stub. Usually you go to your portal, you download it as a PDF, and right. boom, like it's really easy. But this particular pay stub was very. Off. <laughs> they were scamming. That's what it, it sounds like. Shabby. Um, so the pay stub was kind of like a picture. So I'm like, okay, that's fine. Maybe you know she printed, it, you know he printed it off and everything. And when I looked at it, when you look at the address of the pay stub, it was the client's address and email. And it should be a company. It should right? be a company, definitely. And that was a little off to me. So I said, Robbie, now we got to be very honest because we're on the contract and things are moving very quick. Did you just forge these pay stubs? What did he say? What did Robbie <laughs> say? Did Robbie forge them? Robbie said, hold on, let me let me call you back. And now <laughs> like, my heart dropped because in that process, lenders are like detectives. Can y'all agree with me? Oh, yeah. yeah. Lenders are like yeah. detectives. They find out everything. So not only forging your pay stubs and lying about employment verification can, you're going to jail, right? Mm-hmm. Going and, to jail now. <laughs> but you're also putting your realtor in a position, you know, where it's, their career could be in the line. Mm-hmm. So when it comes to employment verification, all that to say is submit the right documents when, and again, those documents are your last two years tax returns, your last W-2s, mm-hmm. okay, your 30-day pay stubs. Depending on your career or your job, they might ask for additional documents, but you do need your Social Security card and your driver's license. So hold on, I don't feel like you told us like, did he have a job? Right. Like, what, what, what happened? happened? The so this is the translation to this is the problem. Now we submitted the 2019 and 2020 tax return. However, Robbie got laid off in March of 2021. Yeah. So when we started the process in November, he submitted. Yes, he had his tax returns in W twos. However, his 30 day pay stubs were not accurate. Mm. Mm. So he wasn't working for like eight months. No, he wasn't working. He had a huge gap. And again, as a realtor, we don't have those documents the lender does. Mm -hmm. So when we found out under contract, it was just like too much. No. So did you guys close? What happened? No. Uh, Robbie cannot get approved. Oh, Oh, goodness. Pro tip. Oh, my God. And he he did not inform me of that. Therefore, he was just wasting time. So you got to keep it real. You got to be honest. Yeah. You cannot scam your way through it. It has to be done. It's a must for getting pre-approved. Yeah. Oh, my God. See, don't scam, y'all. Long story short, don't scam because they're going to no. find out. But keep the you, real in real estate. Keep the keep real. real. Yeah. You need income because they're going to look at your debt-to-income ratio as well. Mm. If you don't have no income, honey, now you all you got is some debt. Yeah. So Ooh. let's get into the debt-to-income ratio. Uh, t- teach us about it. I Tell need us this. About it. Okay, no, that's <laughs> a really, really good point because we focus a lot on the income, but, like, The debt, I always say I think the debt might be a little bit stronger than the income because the example I use of my clients is, let's say you make a million dollars a month. You got that bag. Okay. Yeah. But if you have $999 worth of debt, you make a dollar. And there is no house (laughs) in this market or any market that I know that on a dollar's income you can purchase, right? So it's very important that you match up what you're bringing in and, you know, contrast that to what you're putting out, right? right? Yeah. So I always, you know, people always ask me what is considered debt. The way that I see it is anybody that you owe, that you paying on a monthly basis is considered your debt with the exception of like your current home bills, right? So we're not going to look at what you're paying for rent necessarily towards your debt because it's assumed if you're buying a, you know, owner occupied mm-hmm. home you're not yeah. going to be renting that anymore mm-hmm. so we're looking at your credit cards how much are you paying monthly on that we're looking at your car note how much is that note mm-hmm. if you have student loans our beloved student Ooh, loans you know all loans. of those things that you owe on a monthly basis 
that is what's going to contribute to your debt. Mm -hmm. So like you said, debt to income ratio, the way that we calculate that is take your income, right? Okay. What you bring in on a monthly basis and divide it by what goes out on a monthly basis, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say, you know, you make $10,000 a month, right? You have X amount in credit card, X amount in card note, whatever the debt may be, you divide your 10000 a month mm -hmm. by whatever your debts are, and that will give you a percentage. So rule of thumb, y'all, so just so you know what makes sense for debt to income, we like to keep it around like a 43%. If mm -hmm. you, that's the safety number. That's yeah. the yeah, safety number is. for us. So if you divide your monthly income by your monthly debt, as long as it's 43 or lower, you're good. You know, gonna say keep it P. So if you want to keep it P, <laughs> keep it at 43. Okay? okay. Keep like it that. at I, like that. I always say that. I hate when people come in and like, oh, I just bought a car last month. Like, oh, I don't mm. think you're going to be able to buy a house. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Because that's going to increase significantly. Cars right. are like $20,000. It's like a right. different mortgage. Exactly. Mm -hmm. so and people going. always ask, like, why is that so important? But I'm like, put yourself in the lender's shoes. If my homegirl comes to me like, hey, girl, can I borrow $400,000? Ooh. Girl, show me, show me who else you owe before you okay. pay me. You gotta pay Adam, Tommy, Susie, Bertha, and all these other people before I get my money back. I need to make sure that it makes sense. I need to make sure that once you pay every other person that you owe, mm -hmm. you still you have enough pay to pay yeah. me, and then still have enough to live. Right? right. Like, yeah. You don't want to spend every single last dollar that you have after you pay your bills on a mortgage because how do you live like that? Exactly. Right? You want to keep it realistic. You want it to make sense. So that's why it's super important that if you're going into this home buying process figure out how to manage those debts right mm -hmm. if you have an outstanding credit card bill or just some low debts that you can eliminate take care of it mm -hmm, right? right get you to a point where you can afford the mortgage because right. you don't want to purchase a home that you love and all you can afford to do is live in that house. Right, because right. you, you, right. you still want to go to brunch. You still want hookah. You still want to buy the You still want to live. And if you're not keeping it pee at 43, baby... <laughs> You, you gonna have some problems and so I think as realtors it's very important you know that we express to everybody who's trying to buy a home the importance of just keeping your debts down because we're people at the end of the day you want to live your life and you want to live comfortably you want to be yeah. in a price point that you can actually afford and not living above your means for some grand home that right. you know it's hard to maintain Change. exactly right. absolutely right. bouncing off of keeping your debts let's go into in order to not have your debts you need to save your money oh yes yeah, you need to save important. your money like have some assets you can't, yeah you need to have have money in your bank account. I know a lot of people are like, oh, we can get down payment assistance. They think they can buy a house with no money down. That is absolutely false. Yeah. Even if you don't, even if you do qualify for down payment assistance, there are other costs associated with purchasing a home absolutely. up front. And I always tell my clients, what number do you give your clients? I give my clients about 6 to 8% of the total purchase price of what they need to have saved up. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's about at least house, right? seven. Right. At least. Okay. Yeah, I'm right in the middle of seven. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's a, that's a good number. The more, the better. The yeah, more, course, the better. Yeah. Look, I have 20, <laughs> so okay. we can play around <laughs> right. the market. I have 20. Mm -hmm. Because let's break it down. So let's say we got a $3,000 house. We're going to assume. 3000 I mean, not 3000 Can I have a whole block? Yeah. yeah. Oh. I'll buy the whole block. So sorry. $300,000. Ooh. Typo. <laughs> $300,000 house, okay? Mm -hmm. We're going to assume you're on a conventional loan because your down payment is going to vary based off of your loan type, which mm -hmm. we'll get in another time. But right. let's assume you're on conventional and you got a 3% down payment. That's already $9,000 when you multiply 300000 divided by 0.3%. Mm -hmm. That's 9000 already just for your down payment. Then you have your closing costs, which a lot of people forget about. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> because you do have attorneys. Georgia is an attorney state, so we do have to close our deals with an attorney. Mm -hmm. So you have to pay your attorney that's closing the deal, and you have to pay your lender and your underwriters that are processing the deal. So that's another 3%. That's another $9,000. And something pocket. people don't realize is kind of how we talked about earlier about the differences between our parents buying homes, and mm -hmm. it's now it's like, this is a seller's market. Mm -hmm. yeah. They have a little bit more leverage than buyers. Right. So when back then, it might not, you know, our parents may not have to pay closing costs. The seller costs. probably yes, covered it. Right. Exactly. Right. But in this costs. market, you know, we have to prepare you guys for worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. So preparing yourself to pay for the entire you know, amount the closing cost is going to be, that's super important for you to have that Yeah, just up. in case they don't pay anything. Can you negotiate that at some point in the contract? Maybe. Mm -hmm. But just in case, you may have Very to cover that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Prepare for the worst. Ready. And okay. in this market, 
where also buyers are competing with investors. Mm. Exactly. They're very cash heavy. Very so in order cash to heavy. With them, Bring that need. cash. Because they don't exactly. need no money from the seller. They like, I got it. How much <laughs> right, is it? Right. I got it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, but outside of your down payment, your closing costs, you also got your home inspection. You got your home appraisal, which I you you're going to have to do because your home inspection is going to give you the condition of the house. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. you don't want to walk in the house and the, and the roof is bad. Now you got a whole roof. That's like twenty thousand dollars now. Exactly. Right. And those, you want to know fees are non refundable. Non refundable. You get your home inspection and you get your home appraisal which is the value of the home your lender is going to make you get it pro tip the lender is not loaning you any more money than what that home is worth so whatever it appraises at that's what the lender is going to give you towards that house so those two things together are about a thousand dollars so you're adding your nine thousand plus your nine thousand plus your thousand you got what nineteen thousand dollars i always tell my clients the safe number is fifteen thousand Mm-hmm. Right, what you think? Fifteen thousand, twenty thousand. Yeah. yeah, that's, that's a safe number. Base, that. amount. Yeah. Amount. base yeah. amount. Base amount for yeah. your upfront costs. And don't forget when you get in the house, you're no longer in an apartment. You right. cannot <laughs> call the leasing office and have yes. maintenance pull up. Mm-hmm. You have to get these people yourself. You have to buy the stuff to fix it and have the person who fixes it. So yes, the home purchase is a huge financial decision before and after you get in the house and exactly. this is why you need to be prepared okay you yeah. need to be prepared so mm-hmm. now you got your employment together you consistent but don't let that scare you yes you need money but when you have a reliable and resourceful realtor trust that we can make it happen like for example i have several preferred lenders who offer who do offer down payment assistance programs of mm-hmm. course they do have their credit score minimums, um, their debt to income limits, but you do have that option to go to a lender and not have to pay that down payment. Right. And and that's true because one of, as a buyer's agent, we do want you to spend less money as possible. So for example, one of my preferred lenders, they also have a $5,000 incentive program. If you do purchase new construction. So we have our savvy ways to kind of like hook you up a little bit Mm -hmm. and making sure that you, your investment is worthwhile. Yeah, exactly. and on the new construction tip, I think it's super important. Like, when you buy new construction, there's just incentives in that in general, yeah, right? Yeah. Working with the builder's preferred lenders as well, right? We have a bunch of different resources mm-hmm. where you're not even confined to just one person. You can still shop around like mm-hmm. everybody else, but you're shopping around with lenders who can also give you those same new construction um, incentives, incentives. Yeah. towards right. your payments. Right. to help you with your upfront costs. So there are resources, so make sure you do have a realtor who is providing you with those resources to make sure that you're getting the best deal that you can. Mm -hmm. And this is why it's really important to work with an agent who has your best interest at heart. Mm -hmm. I always try to go to bat for my clients if I have to negotiate with the seller, see if they can get a home warranty. For those of you who don't know what a home warranty is, it's basically kind of like an insurance plan. You know, like if something were to happen in the house after you moved in, let's say an appliance stopped working or something that can be covered. So Working with somebody who's experienced and knows how to negotiate for you is super important. Right. Mm-hmm. That's Real another talk. good way to alleviate Real your talk. calls. Real, <laughs> Real talk. talk. You're yeah. alleviating calls. So that was good. So we have our employment. We have our debt to income. We have our savings. And last but not least, you mm-hmm. got to have a good credit score. Credit yeah. matters. Credit it is does. king. It does. <laughs> Y'all, y'all know my joke, right? <laughs> y'all know Please the Jay-Z it. song? Please say, Please say it. it. You say you know it's more important than blowing money in a strip club. Yeah. What? What is it? It's credit. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. favorite So, no, I love that song. But anyway, credit's super important. I feel like a lot of people don't like talking about it. But one thing to keep in mind, I don't think people know this, but your mortgage credit score is a little different than your typical consumer credit score. Mm-hmm, you know what absolutely. you would use to get a credit card or to go out and get a new car, the system's a little different. So when you go to apply for a mortgage, your loan officer is going to pull your credit from the three main bureaus, you know, TransUnion, Equifax, and um, Experian. Mm -hmm. And then when he pulls the credit report, it's going to be a sheet. It's called your residential mortgage credit report. So on that sheet, there's your three scores. And he's going to basically take out the top number, throw that away, and look at the bottom number, throw that away. So all that's left is your middle score, Mm -hmm. and that's what they're going to use to approve you for your mortgage. So, for instance, I always recommend, what about you guys? My clients have at least a 640 to get approved. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Mm -hmm. a 580 
A 580 is kind of like the entry point to get approved for a loan, but obviously the higher the better. So or if FHA you can get, though, FH, yes. FHA is like 580 and conventional is like 620. Yes, Absolutely. yes. Yeah. So obviously, like I said, the higher the better. You can get approved with a 580. It all just depends on what we mentioned, like your DTI and your mm-hmm. savings. I've seen people get denied and they have an 800 credit score and people get approved with like a 500 so it just depends but what if but what if I'm like applying with my spouse like if I have my husband and we're both going to be on the mortgage yeah what does that look like so like you said a lot of people they're not applying for a mortgage by themselves so if you are applying with your partner it's good to know that the lender is only going to assess the person's credit who has a lesser score So let's say you and your husband want to apply for a mortgage and your husband has a lesser score than you. Well, the lender is only going to look at his profile. And like I said, he's only going to use that middle number. So if you and your partner have a huge gap in your credit scores, it may just be better to use whoever has a stronger a profile. Yeah. yeah. Right. Make sure your husband's credit is good too. <laughs> right. Uh, hold yeah. on. We gonna call that tips for you and Bay from Ashley. Okay. 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 No, that was good. For sure. For sure. That's, yeah, that's important, but we're not gonna get into that. <laughs> okay. How can we help them? Like, what's a good tactic for them to build their credit score? Right. Like, if it's not in a good space, mm-hmm. what can they do to work on it and get it to that point to get them approved? So, I would say my main three tips, number one, Anika, you kind of, touched on this a little bit or was it river we all the same yeah Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) if you're currently renting if you're um, paying your rent on time every month you can definitely use your on time rent payments towards your credit Mm -hmm. so that's a lot of people don't do that they're supposed to but if you don't keep up with it then you know right at least for one year you have to have at least one year of on time payments you can definitely use that towards your credit something else that you can do is to use credit cards to your advantage. So you can become an authorized user if you have someone that you trust, a close family member, a close friend who has a really positive or strong credit history, you can get added to their account and that'll instantly boost your credit score also. Absolutely. Ooh, I didn't know that. Girl, yeah. I've been at JC Penny since 1990. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to my mom. That one. No, Loki, I do have a Coles card that I paid off and no. I just never yeah. used it. Since you were like six. Literally. <laughs> and something else that you can do is to obviously pay down your credit card. So it's always recommended to pay down at least 30% of your utilization. But like I said, the more the better. So if you can pay down 30, try to pay down 10% or 5%. Mm-hmm. The more or the less that your um, credit card bills are, the better. Yes. Those are my yes. tips. My clients yes. also pay. Do y'all ever tell them like to pay before the statement comes? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 If you pay a little bit more than your minimum, like if your minimum is 40, try to at least double it, like 80 mm-hmm. or 60. Pay mm-hmm. a little bit extra and pay it before that before. statement comes out. Right. Mm-hmm. And if you, you can, can pay it twice, if you can pay yeah. it twice, that's going to really help you because credit cards, we know, have interest. The more you pay, less interest you're accumulating. Just keep mm-hmm. that credit as strong as you possibly can. Right. Yes. And mind you, we're not credit professionals or anything but (laughs) any of our mortgage lenders our preferred lenders can also offer you credit enhancement if you ever need any help with that yeah yes i hope you guys got your opinion pad out because (laughs) the gym we weren't giving you what you need to know Mm -hmm. to get this pre-approval and that's really it you guys those are the four key points that you need to get a pre-approval like you need your employment consistent employment you Mm -hmm. have to have a good debt to income ratio a good credit score Mm -hmm. and you need to have your money saved and once you get to that point you're ready to go at that point you can call any one of us and we'll get (laughs) you right correct 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 (laughs) so i think that's a good step segue into our question of the day yes. Ashley LeRae let's see what we get today Exciting. what do people want I to love know the rhyme. I love the rhyme Ashley LeRae what do we get today <laughs> I'm let's excited see. should I close my eyes close your eyes child I'll be scared <laughs> today's question is this is a good one what is one difficult attribute that a client can have during the home buying or selling process mm. Mm. just one I guess I'll start. Mm-hmm. So for me, the most difficult one is just not trusting me, not Ooh, feeling like big. I know what I'm doing. Like I am a professional. I'm looking at, in the field, in the market every day. I'm a full time realtor. This is life. Mm-hmm. Right. I know what's going on. I know mom, dad, auntie and uncle have their stories of their buying process. But this is today. And it takes a negative effect on the process when you know that your client just doesn't trust you. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. 
Because they're going to question, like, everything you do. Right, which I got an answer for. Right. But trust me. <laughs> yeah. We want this as much as you do. Right. right. <laughs> and you know what's crazy? I was thinking, Nika, when you were telling your story, how trust is a two-way street. Of mm-hmm. course, our clients want to trust us, but we also need to trust you. Like, mm-hmm. you have to be honest with us also. Integrity. Yeah. And that's mm-hmm. my, yeah. that's crazy because I was just going to piggyback on her story from earlier. The most difficult attribute for me is, like, the inability or the not wanting to disclose just information to us like we're gonna find out yeah (laughs) we're here with you we watch you we see you and we're gonna find out Mm -hmm. so I think when clients you know fail to disclose are like really really skeptical about disclosing it leans back on the trust but that kind of makes it harder for us like if you tell me everything up front hey River look I'm struggling in the credit area Mm -hmm. I have X amount of dollars saved this is what my employment is if I know all of those things up front I can come up with the action plan right they will tell you ladies I'm resourceful I'm gonna figure it out. Hey, we need you to do this. We need you to do that. Credit this, credit. And we'll come up. I mean, we want you to get into a home, but we want you to do it the right way. So if I have to come up with a six to eight month action plan, I'm going to do that. Yeah. Because I'm going to get my client in the home. But my, the hardest thing for me as a realtor is like when you kind of don't tell me everything or when you're holding back from me because the more you tell me the better of a plan I can get to help you right. get to the where you're trying to help go. you mm-hmm. right right and for me the worst attribute I would say is to not be organized to be unorganized you don't know where your documents are you don't know what's going on and it's like you're indecisive so it's based like indecisiveness and not being prepared really doesn't make the process smoother. Mm -hmm. And like I said earlier, um, real estate is time is of the essence. So if you're not organized, it's going to be a rocky, rocky road Mm -hmm. for everyone. Yeah. Even how you mentioned during the lending process, even though you submit your documents in the beginning during the whole process until you close, they're going to keep asking you for the same stuff. Even at closing. Yeah. Yeah, Mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. So, I'll say for me, mine, you have to be open minded. Mm -hmm. You just have to be, especially in this market, you can really miss out on something good just because you weren't open to, you know, other ideas or something that you initially didn't plan. So that's my biggest thing. Mm -hmm. You know what they say, man, plan. God laughs. <laughs> you might walk in there thinking you you so hung up on one thing, but yeah. you miss a lot of great opportunities in this market, especially a developing place like Atlanta. Mm-hmm. You miss out on a lot of good opportunities just walking in with, I'm getting this, this, and then, and that's it. Yeah. And, and how many times they actually have to settle for something? Like, they and have, it, yeah. yeah. And it don't even be settling, girl. They'll be like, I never knew I love this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Be yeah. Open. Be I, open. Love yeah I love that. Can I tell y'all, I had a client, love her to death, but... She didn't want a house because, you you know, the lights over the island, the um, pendant like, lights, yeah. it didn't have that. And I was like, okay, well, let's just go to Home Depot and buy it. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. you know? So I'll definitely be open-minded. It. Even like small cosmetic stuff, paint, right. carpet, anything. You can always change and update it because it's your house. You can do what, whatever you, you want. Please. Yeah, You're going to end up compromising a couple things. Yeah. 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 And then make it your own. Okay. And that's the real, baby. And that's the real <laughs> talk of Atlanta for this episode, ladies. Are we feeling good? Was that what, we, what yeah. are we thinking? Yeah. Oh, that's good. I'm ready to get I y'all some golden tickets. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Make sure y'all tune in every week. Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on all our social platforms, which we will have below. We appreciate you watching. Yes. And thank you. For in. Thank you. Yeah, let's Cheers, get ladies. Cheers to a good week.